That's right, coming to you by corporate occupied territory, the global corporate takeover of the United States, the entire planet, known as the New World Order, is moving quickly. At the bottom of the hour, I'm going to break down all these mainstream articles calling for a world government, world taxes. Meanwhile, the George Soros publications are saying we're liars, none of this exists, using a military tactic of stalling, so we just argue about whether or not it exists, rather than whether we want it or not. Dr. Jerome Corsi received a Ph.D. from Harvard University in political science in 72, and has written many best-selling books, including the number one New York Times bestseller, Unfit for Command, Swift Boat, Veterans Speak Out Against Kerry. His latest bestseller was the late great USA that we sell, by the way, the latest edition on Infowars.com, the coming merger of Mexico-Canada. He's a senior staff reporter for World Net Daily. He's also written uh, for Human Events and other big publications. His newest book is America for Sale. We'll have him back on the next few weeks about that. Uh, Dr. Corsi, I got a host of issues. The flu... Google and these smart thermostats, California putting in another system that tracks, Texas putting them in. We have one here at the office. It can tell what we're using, what we're doing, total surveillance. But I wanted to throw this out at you while I have you. I consulted on a new film, Camp FEMA, that just came out that we have at Infowars.com, and I'm in it. It has the FEMA documents, the legislation, uh, the emergency management plans, the continuity of government, the whole system. And Glenn Beck, who I know you've been on the Fox News shows, I'm not getting you here to bash, and he's a big leader in the Patriot movement and you know, exposing a lot of things that are important, like the government health care. But he had popular mechanics on to say that the FEMA camps is all made up, and he used a straw man of a debunk thing from the mid-'90s uh, you know, to say none of this exists. But you've written a bunch of articles about the FEMA camps. So has the New York Times, for that matter, and the Houston Chronicle. Give us quickly your take on the FEMA camps, and, and maybe I could send this video that I worked on to him, and, and maybe then he'll he'll uh, change his tune? Well, I, I don't have the articles in front of me right now, Alex, but I, did, I have documented contracts from the Department of Homeland Security to build uh, temporary detention camps. Uh, these have been in effect since the uh, Bush administration. And I continue to be concerned that under the idea of protecting us in natural disasters like Katrina, government is gaining powers which could be used in the event of civil disorder. Uh, I, I lived through the 1970s and I did a lot of reporting even when I was uh, working for research institutes and academics going back to the 1970s about the detention camps that were used in protests like the May Day protest in Washington, D.C. I did a lot of research on uh, uh, Commander uh, Captain Zanders who was head of the D.C., Washington, D.C. police force. So there's been a lot of history in the United States, and it's not all been good, of utilizing detention camps going back to the Japanese detention camps in World War II. I think any attempt to just poo-poo the effort uh, for, instance, I reported on the National Homeland Security Directives that President Bush signed. PDD-51. Which gave him authority to declare that the office of the president was in charge of all levels of government, down to tribal government, in the declaration, the self-declaration by the president of a national emergency, very broadly defined, which could include, again, not just natural disasters or health disasters, but it could include a variety of civil protest situations. And now they're using the Army to spy on in the Fed protest. That's been declassified. Now the Army wants 379,000 troops in America. Well, I've also reported extensively on U.S. NORTHCOM and its mission to be a military presence in civil emergency situations. And, Alex, these things are always very difficult. They're presented as if this is, you know, the United States government trying to assist the citizens. And there can be legitimate but limited roles for the federal government and even the military to play in national, natural, natural hazards or other national emergencies. But what about but the Arcadia drill? Lines. What about the Arcadia drill in Iowa this but, year for gun confiscation? These are very fine lines that they very easily cross over into violations of civil liberties and disrespect for the fundamental aggressive rights of protest that we have under the First Amendment. So I'm always very concerned about these, Alex, and the powers exist. There are presidential directives which could be used to exert martial law. Uh, there are powers to create temporary camps, which could be used to create detention camps. And I think it's important and responsible for people like yourself, for us at World Net Daily, to keep reporting of these issues so the American people are aware of a potential expansion of 
government power that would be completely antagonistic to the First Amendment. Well, sir, just so you know, from Texas to Arizona to Michigan to California, regular Army, regular Marines, and National Guard, and in Tennessee three months ago, we had the state rep on. The Army was running checkpoints with Homeland Security in Tennessee. The governor said don't do it, and the Army ignored them. I'm playing a YouTube video sent to us from just a few days ago of, of National Guard troops in the middle of Arizona out searching people's cars. And, and so, I'd like to see this new film you created. I haven't seen this one. I've, I've seen most of your previous films, and I enjoy them, and I think they're well done. I want to see this new one. Well, I want to get into some other subjects with you, like the big report you've got at WorldNet Daily today. Yeah. Also, Christian Science Monitor coming soon. Google your electricity use, tracking everything going on in your home. Uh, also, your article, Get Ready, Here Come the Energy Police. Google Power Meter could mean regulation of your private home. And we're going to go over these. Google.org is partnered with EPB, JEA, Reliance Energy, SDGE. Uh, Simpra Energy, Toronto Hydro, TXU, White River Electric Cooperative, WPS, Wisconsin, Yellowstorm. It goes on and on. ITRON. And uh, then I have the other articles here uh, out of California where they're making people take these. They came put and they came and put it on our business a few months ago here in Austin on our company uh, thing. Didn't even ask. They just put it in. And they admit it tracks everything we're doing. Well, and see, again, this, what this is is what's called a Google Power Meter. And it's an Internet-based technology that measures your use of energy. And, of course, Google, all these things come presenting, as, presenting themselves as a great favor to you. Google says, well, when you go to the grocery store, you get an itemized list of the groceries you bought. Why should you just get an energy bill at the end of the month? for the energy company without itemizing your use of power by specific you know, refrigerator, air conditioning, heater, etc. And they uh, mention carbon tax. This is getting us ready for carbon, carbon audits. See, all of this sounds great, uh, but what happens on this, Alex, is it sets up the basis for the government then to have standards where they say, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, you're using too much energy. And when you combine it, as I have with the census reporting that's being planned, including the census survey that's going to be taken on a sample of the American people where the government's going to know exactly who's in your home, uh, what education they've got, what languages they speak, what nationality they are, how much money they make, etc. It's very conceivable that this energy meter then becomes the energy police. And Google provides the government with the data to saying, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones or Mr. Corsi, your home is too big. You know, you've got to pay surcharge because you've got these additional rooms, unless you, of course, you want to maybe move in a poor family and house them. Or, and by the way, your refrigerator's a little bit old, and we don't think you've had proper insulation in your home. And they say if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. They're admitting this is part of the new climate change bill with these home inspections where the feds can evict you anytime they want if you don't, quote, comply with federal international zoning. And what they're saying is it's ET meets IT. In other words, uh, energy technology meeting Internet technology, information technology. And it's being beta tested by Google, not just in the United States, but in India, Germany, Canada. Google intends this to be a global standard. So we've got more one world order of vision here saying that our energy use, our carbon emission footprint, all of these things can be measured, controlled, regulated by the government with new standards that are, that are fundamentally anti-free enterprise. Right now, if you use energy and you pay for it, you have a right to buy the energy being sold to you by the utility. And again, they brag. Enron came up with this idea more than 12 years ago. They brag, just like with artificial scarcity with water or diamonds or oil, they will restrict it make you cut back on what you're using, and then just charge you more for less. It's a total scam. Well, and again, people have got to be aware of the power of the government in these situations. Look at the farmers out in Southern California where the government is cutting off their water to protect some environmental creature that they don't want to go extinct. But, but, and, but, but this also sets the precedent, as you write in your article, that Google is hooked into your house it's got algorithms that can tell when you're using the washing machine, the toaster. They admit this. They're now going to be itemizing what you're doing. What you're doing. 
This is the equivalent of cameras in the your, house. They can Go tell ahead. when you're using your television, when you're using your washer and dryer, when you're using your dishwasher, when you're using your air conditioner. They can measure whether or not this meets. So it's a complete monitoring. And they're already saying if you're an energy waster or like in Austin, they charge you more if you use a lot of water, they're going to penalize you. They're, they're surveilling you. This is Big Brother. This is a monitoring of what goes on inside your home, your, your daily activities measured in terms of energy with a government regulation that could either say you're, you're violating some law how you're using energy or you're going to have a surcharge placed on you or in the... And under these new public welfare definitions that have, for instance, allowed expanded powers of eminent domain, the government's either going to move a family in with you or they're going to restrict your ability to use the entire house the way you want to use it.